in this video walkthrough we're going to end up with a stunning aerial photograph of a scene that looks like it was taken with a fisheye lens. But don't worry, you can do this by standing on the ground and then using photo merge panorama and filters to create this amazing fisheye effect. So it looks like we're floating in a hot air balloon above the location, but we're actually standing right in the middle of the courtyard. And let me just show you the source images that we're going to stitch together. We've got 84 of them, and it's going to be a big stitching job, but Photo Merge is up to the task. Let's just look at the start images. We stood in the middle of the location, and then we tilted up to take photographs that were overlapping to make sure we got every part of the building. Then we rotated slightly and did the same thing, tilting up to capture the entire scene and so on and so forth until we'd gone the 360 circle all the way around the location to capture every inch of the buildings there. So let's kick off in Photoshop. I've got the layers palette up because it's always useful to be able to see how Photo Merge creates a multiple layer document and it repositions the images to create a panorama. So leave that open and then go to File, New and go down to Photo Merge Panorama and then up pops the photo merge window and you can use that to browse to the source folder of photographs. Now in this case they're on the desktop of my particular machine but you'll find them on your disk and they're numbered from 1 all the way up to 84. Okay what we're going to do is stitch these together in batches of 12 to create seven different panoramas and then we're going to stitch those together to create our epic aerial panorama at the end. So to get the first 12 click and then hold the shift key and go to number 12 and then click OK and those will appear in the source file section. Okay, So you've got 1 to 11 and then 12 at the top there but it will stitch them together in the correct order. Now because we've got lots of complicated architectural features it might be useful to reposition things manually so go to interactive layout and it's still going to blend the images together to create a nice smooth blend between each of the 12 images. So once you've imported the source files, chosen your layout, uh, you can then click on OK and it will stitch those together and create a new document in which there's enough canvas space to add them all together as a panorama. So it's putting them all in the same document at the start and it's now having a think about merging them and aligning them. It's looking at all the architectural details and it's doing some very clever things that would take ages to do manually. Now when you first see its attempt to align all of the images together, they look pretty poor because you've got changes in tone and you've got misaligned architecture as well. But we can fine tune that by using this tool up here. If you just click and select it, you can then click and drag on a particular photo. It becomes semi-transparent and enables you to then see the underlying image and you can overlap them a little bit more effectively. And that looks not too bad at all. You could also click here maybe and try and push that up a little bit to see whether you can improve that. Now you won't get it perfect and you'll see things like this becoming misaligned but don't worry too much because there's lots of photographic detail on various layers and Photo Merge will choose the best bits to create a more seamless panorama and it will use layer masks to create a more effective blend. So it looks a bit rubbish at the moment but when you click OK it's going to take these separate images, it's going to position them, it's going to create layer masks to blend between the various details much more effectively than we saw in that very rough preview. So here's our masks being created and it's going for a seamless composition and that is looking much much better and the tones are better too compared to the darker and lighter tones we saw in the preview. So that's cool. Don't click yes when it asks you to fill in the edges because it doesn't really work too well and uh, it might not have enough RAM either. We're going to fill these edges in ourselves later. So click no and here is our first panorama. So the first thing to do is to save this as a JPEG. So go to file, save as and we're going to call that um, Panorama 1, save it as a JPEG, and then uh, I'm just going to pop that on the desktop for the moment, click Save, and we're going to create seven different panoramas which we can then stitch together to create our fisheye effect. So repeat those techniques to stitch together Panorama 2, that's the next 12 shots in the batch, then the next 12 will create Panorama 3, Panorama 4, five and six and most of the time you won't need to do much manual repositioning at all so don't get too obsessed when it doesn't seem like the top of this building aligns it will blend it more effectively using the layer masks once you click OK so again don't spend a huge amount of time trying to get things perfect in the uh, alignment stage um, because Photoshop is very clever and it will do most of the work for you so you'll end up with seven panoramic images which we're going to stitch together to create our fisheye effect let me take you through stitching those seven images together because you do have to do a little bit of fiddling there. Let's go back to Panorama again and let's just browse to the folder that's containing our seven panoramas. I popped them up into one folder to make it easier to import. Let's go to Interactive Layout, go to Browse 
and here's my seven images. Click to select them all with the shift key held down, click OK, and they'll be appearing here in the source file section like normal. You've done this a few times already, and then let's click OK to start stitching those together. Now, this time when Photo Merge tries to stitch these shots together, it won't do such a good job, but we're going to position things manually to put this building in the center of the frame. To do that, let's go over to here and drag this one over to this side of the shot and try and align those. We can fine tune things a bit later. Then hold the space bar to get the hand tool, move to the right, and then drag this bit over here and align it like so. And we're then going to take this bit here and pop it over the building like that in the right position there. Okay, we can then bring these ones out for the moment, bring this one up, try and align that, and then take that one over here. And you can see that we're creating a shot now with a door at either side. It's the same door in both pictures, and we've got that main building in the center. You can try fine tuning things a little bit, but this area here will automatically be blended correctly because it can work out which bits need to align properly. So it won't look so good like this, but once we click OK, you'll find the blended version is much more effective. And again, once it's stitched them all together, it will ask you if you want to fill in the edges. Just click No, and you'll see something that looks like this. Let me just hide the panel bin to make a wee bit more space for our shot. OK, that's not too bad at all. What we need to do now is to straighten things up. So this top building here is in the same position as this one here. And we also need to crop to lose one of these extra doors. Now, we no longer need our layers or layer masks because we've got our nice panorama already created. So I'm just going to go to Layer, and I'm going to choose Merge Layers, and it will flatten them down into one layer against a transparent background. What we can do then is use rulers to help us align the top of this building with this one here because we're going to wrap these around, and we're going to make this bit meet this bit to create our circular panorama, so they need to be at the same position in the frame. To do that, if you go to View, you can turn the rulers on, you can then drag a grid down from the top, pop it just at the uh, top section of this building here, and you can see there's quite a discrepancy. So Control t gives me the free transform tool, I can then rotate things up a little bit more, and then push things up so that we've got the uh, guide showing that we've got the um, top of the building in the same place, pretty much in both sections. I'll use the up arrow just to move the image up a wee bit more. And that's aligned the top sections now more effectively. Hit return to apply the change and then we can crop the image and we're going to make the crop tool lose one of these doors. So we click and crop here just where that door um, ends and go to where this one begins so that we've got one door in the shot there. So yes this bit here and this bit here will now match perfectly. I'm just going to um, make this a little bit smaller to lose some of the bits at the bottom there. Go down to the top as well. Hit return and here's our cropped version. So once you've cropped and rotated your shot we can go up to image and choose rotate. Choose 180 to flip it upside down. Then pop to filter. Go to distort and this is fun. If we go to polar coordinates we can choose rectangular to polar and it will create a circular version of the shot and because we align that correctly this bit here should match perfectly with this bit to create a circular version of our image which now looks like it's a panorama. Control T allows us to get the free transform tool and what we need to do is to turn this oval into more of a circular shape just to create our little um, aerial view. It looks like a little planet doesn't it with very big buildings. Okay when you're happy with that click the tick to apply the change grab the crop tool and then just crop in like so to create a square version. If we get the layers palette back up we can always put um, a white background there just to fill any holes. So if we go to layers, create a new layer. Let's just grab this tool here and fill the whole layer with white. Pop it below and that gets rid of any transparent edges. Now finally we've got a little bit in the middle and that's where we were standing so we couldn't take photographs of where our feet were. So we're going to use the clone stamp just to repair this little hole. So click on the create new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette, grab the clone stamp, make sure you've got sample all layers ticked and then use a nice small brush of around about maybe 27 and then simply just alt click to sample a bit of texture, click and spray over the central point and you can always try and extend some lines like this over just to kind of continue in the lines as they move towards the center of the image. Maybe we'll go here, alt click to sample, click and spray and then just extend that over the middle like so. I'm going to use a smaller brush tip using the left square bracket, grab this bit here and just try and draw that line a little bit more forward into the middle of the frame. And there we have our cloned layer which is hiding the hole. We can then merge them down a little bit. If you go to merge down you can then create your panorama again. Z for the zoom tool, 
right click to fit on screen and I'm just going to control T to transform it and rotate it just to kind of get that building with the columns at the top like so and this building at an angle just to improve composition and finally there's a wee bit of blue sky left over from the original shot so B for the brush tool use um, a nice white brush scale it down and just spray out that little bit of blue sky with a bit of white and there is our circular fisheye aerial panorama